what I want to know is from each one of you, literally, is what keeps you up at night? You're all the experts, for good or for bad. And I'm going to start with you. We can conceive of it as us being now on the cusp, I think, of a profound change in our relationship to machines that's going to transform the way we live, transform the way we work, even transform our very experience of what it means to be human. That's how seismic this is. If you consider the exponential technologies of the past 30 years, the so-called technologies of the information age, from the internet to cloud to the smartphone, it's all been about building a digital infrastructure and a digital ecosystem, which has become a fundamental tenant of life. However, AI takes it a step further. With AI, and in particular, generative AI, which is what I have been following and tracking for the last decade, you're really looking at the information revolution becoming an intelligence revolution. Because these are machines that are now capable of doing things that we thought were only unique to human creativity and to human intelligence. So the impact of this uh, as a whole for the labor market, for the way we work, for the, la the way that the very framework of society unfolds is just so important. Mm -hmm. My background is in geopolitics, where I kind of advise global leaders for the better half of two decades. And the reason I became interested in AI is not because I have a tech background. I have a background assessing trends for humanity. Mm -hmm. This isn't about technology. This is ultimately a story for humanity and how we decide this technology is going to unfold in our companies, so within enterprise, very exciting, but also society writ large. And the final thing I'd say is we have agency. A lot of the debate has been about AI autonomously taking over. And I just want to kind of divorce that kind of hypothetical scenario with the reality, and that is we decide. Connor, though, you believe, because we've spoken before, that actually these machines are going to be so powerful and so unable to control by human input that they actually could take over. Unfortunately, I do think that this is a possibility. In fact, I expect this default probability. But I would like to agree with Nina fully that we do have agency. This doesn't have to happen. But you're, you asked the question earlier, what keeps me up at night? And I guess what I would say what keeps me up at night is that a couple million years ago, the common ancestor between chimpanzee and humans split into two subspecies. One of these developed a roughly three, si three times larger brain than the other species. One of them goes to the moon and builds nuclear weapons. One of them doesn't. One of them is at the complete mercy of the other. One of them has full control. I think this kind of relationship to very powerful technology can happen. I'm not saying may not even can't. It is the default outcome. Unless we take our agency, we see that we are in control. We are the ones building these technologies. And as a society, we decide to go a different path. So to follow up on that, the same question to you, but from the point of view of how do we have agency, express agency, and regulate. You're a private uh, entrepreneur. You also have been on the government, the British government's sort of regulation council. Yeah. What will it take to ensure diversity, agency, and that the machines don't take over? Well, what it takes to ensure that is it's a lot of work and there's lots of ideas, there's lots of theories, there are white papers, there's the pro-innovation regulation review that I worked on with uh, Sir Patrick Valance here in the UK, the US government has been issuing guidance, the EU is issuing its own laws and guidance, but what we want to see is execution, Christiane. And you know, on the sort of what keeps you up at night, I feel sorry for my husband because actually, <laughs> while I, what keeps me up is, is actually other issues such as things like disinformation with generative AI. And I've got two children who are 11 and 13. Are they going to grow up in a world where they can trust information and what's out there? Or are these technologies, because of lack of execution uh, on the side of policymakers, means that actually it's sort of a free-for-all. You know, bad actors have access to this technology and you don't know what to trust. But actually, the biggest thing that keeps me up at night is, is a flip from what we've heard here. It's are we, as, as a human race, are we going to benefit from the opportunities that artificial intelligence also enables us you know, to have? So we, we often talk, and, and Christian, you know, forgive me, but for the last six months, it's all been about chat GPT and generative AI. That is really important, and that's where a lot of this discussion should be placed. But we also have traditional AI. So we have artificial intelligence where we've been using data, we've been classifying, we've been predicting, uh, we've been looking at scans and spotting cancer where we've got a lack of radiologists, right? And we can augment radiology, we can augment teaching and learning. So how are we also going to ensure that 
all around society, we don't actually exacerbate the digital divide, right? But we leverage artificial intelligence for what the best it can provide to help us in the areas of healthcare, education, security. So, you know, it, it's scary to think we're not using it to its full advantages, while we also must focus on the risks and the concerns. And so really, I sort of have this dual sort of what keeps me up at night. As I said, I sort of feel sorry for my husband because I'm sort of tapping on his shoulder going, and oh, what about this? And what about that? We really need many different voices helping us build and design these systems and make sure they're safe. Not just the technical uh, teams that are, are working at the companies to build the AI that is, they're talking to the governments about. We need women, we need uh, age, age range, we need um, diversity from different subject areas. We need lots of different voices and that's what keeps me awake at night.